And welcome back, everyone. And joining us for our roundtable tonight is U.S. and candidate Carlos Baru, Christian Ziegler, Sarasota committee man for the Republican Party of Florida, and Joe Gruders, the chairman of Donald Trump's Florida campaign. Gentlemen, uh, what, a, what a day it was yesterday. And uh, Carlos, let me start with you because you are here, your primary opponent is not. And what do you think that says? Well, it basically is a, the, 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 the typical politician thing where you have a tepid, well, do I or don't I or what's best for me? And what's best for this country is Donald Trump to be the next president of the United States, and that's who I'm here to support. But obviously, Senator Rubio is making a different decision, and, and frankly, he's not alone. There are other U.S. senators he's who alone are not as far here. As I'm concerned. Okay. <laughs> but why did you feel it was important to, to to be here? Because actually, Senator Rubio is is going around Florida, and he is he is campaigning. He is spending the time. No, he's spending the time now. They didn't spend the last six years. Right. Uh, Christian, what did you think of, of last night? Because obviously, uh, you know, the, the it was a little bumpy begin, uh, beginning to the convention on Monday. Yesterday, it was absolutely smooth. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's exciting. You know, we officially have our nominee. So all the discussions about the primary and if Trump's going to be our nominee or not uh, is over. So now the Republican Party, we're going to unify. We're going to focus on November. So that really is the pivot point for the grassroots, for the Republican Party, to really get us mobilized and push us towards making the phone calls, knocking on the doors, to ensure that we defeat Hillary in November. And, and Joe, you know, I, on a personal note, uh, we interviewed Corey Lewandowski, your, your, your former boss, so to speak, uh, the other day, and, and it was interesting because he got Donald Trump here, in, in a large part, and now he's kind of a spectator. Um, have you given that much thought? No, I'll say what a what an act of true class yesterday when he actually uh, led the New Hampshire delegation, giving uh, Trump the votes out of there. New Hampshire was the first state that came out and voted for Trump. So it's, it was a big day for him, but it's a big day for Donald Trump, obviously securing the nomination as an outsider, beating 16 others. But today's focus is putting America first again, and it's going to be interesting to see the speakers that we see today, and uh, I expect big things tonight. Let me ask you this. Uh, when I watched the coverage, it seemed like there were two parts of it. Uh, there was the red meat, Chris Christie uh, last night, uh, Don Jr., and um, uh, Mr. Trump's uh, other daughter. There, it seems like the red meat is for the people in the, in the room, and the family is for everybody watching on TV. Well, I think uh, Donald Jr. hit it out of the park last night. He talked about his father in a way that we all want to hear that he you know really personalized the message uh it brought it home to people and i think people that are watching at home really enjoyed his speak we had nothing i mean i think if donald jr was running we'd probably win by 20 points it was an amazing time uh and yes i mean there's always messages out there and people go off script you got to think about this every speaker that, speaker that goes up there especially these elected officials they all have their own backgrounds their own stories to tell and that's what make these makes these conventions so great is they all are bringing a different unique perspective and i remember watching ben carson speak last night and all of a sudden he went off script and you could see the teleprompter in back and see what he's supposed to say and he's going completely off of it and i thought man Dr. Ben Carson, we had him in Sarasota. He was he hit another home run back there, and I thought he did well last night. And it's like every speaker back to back to back. You know, I think they're pushing the agenda of the day. I think they're doing a good job, and I think as a result, more Republicans are coming to the table, uniting, and I think we're getting more and more exciting. And the momentum is building as we headed to Donald Trump's speech on Thursday night. Carlos, I, I don't know if you've been to other GOP conventions. Uh, Number one, have you? And number, okay. And how does your former role compare to what you're doing now? It's completely different. Uh, I went as a delegate, so this is the first time I've obviously run for anything, and uh, pretty much the last time I'm ever going to run for anything. So <laughs> that's kind of Sherman esque. <laughs> but we could get to that until his reelection. <laughs> we, of course, we could get to that for a moment. Of course, until I'm reelected. But, but what do you? So what is your? What's your job here? My job is here is to support the, the nominee and make sure that, that the party understands that there's some of us that are 100 percent committed to Donald Trump for president. But what, what are you doing in terms of meeting and greeting members of the Florida delegation? What, what do you hope to accomplish right here? Just be part of the group. That's all. Just be one of the supporters. And, and back to <laughs> saying it's your only run, I mean, one way or the other, um, I mean, if this didn't work out, would you consider running for I'm not even office? worried about that at this point. I'm not even thinking about that. That's for, that's for politicians who think that far ahead. 
Christian, uh, I got to solve the problem now. <laughs> What's your impressions in terms of, of just the Florida of the delegation right now? What you're doing, what you're seeing, uh, you know, what you're hearing from, you know, delegates from other states. I think one word: unified. Uh, you know, Donald Trump obviously won 66 out of 67 counties in Florida. Um, you go around to all the delegates here, but also all the party leaders within the state party of the Republican Party of Florida, and everyone is unified, excited to get behind Donald Trump, and really even more so excited to defeat Hillary Clinton. So, you know, there's not really a candidate that could run for the Democratic nomination or, or the Democratic candidate for president than Hillary Clinton that's going to mobilize us more. So um, I think Republicans are unified, excited, um, and once we leave this convention, we're all going to, you know, go back to our areas and we're going to get on the phones, knock on the doors, and ensure that Donald Trump wins. Angel, let me ask you one, one other question. You've been to a few of these uh, national conventions. How does what Cleveland is offering right now compare to Tampa four years ago, just in terms of logistics and things to do? And, and give me a little bit of that color. Well, I will tell you that we had a board meeting today and they asked that same question. I said that this is 10 times better than our Tampa experience. Because in Tampa, remember, we were bused almost two hours away from the convention hall. We were actually further away in our hotel than we would have been if we would have drove from our own homes. Cleveland is surprisingly a beautiful city. They've done so much to, it, to really enrich the experience of all the delegates. Our days are completely packed, if not with uh, uh, internal party meetings. Uh, they have different activities. It's been an absolutely amazing experience. We're meeting the, the, the best and brightest political figures across this great country. And it's really a crash course education lesson where we're getting as all this conservative, uh, uh, it's an incredible conservative education. It's just been amazing. And we just have a few minutes left here, but let me ask you both uh, something. Uh, yesterday afternoon, there were some protests outside that seemed to be two different types. There was the Black Lives uh, Movement and then some Christian organizations, and it was really getting heated outside. Are you concerned that um, each day of the week, it's, it's ramping up just a little bit more? It's going to because there's obviously the attention is on Thursday night when Donald Trump's here and gives his, you know, uh, keynote speech. Uh, but really, when you see it, I've actually been shocked. I haven't seen too much protesting at all. I think the media and everyone was really hyping it up before the convention. Um, and in addition to the security and both, really, I, I've never felt more secure. Um, you look at there's it's impossible to not see a law enforcement officer um, when you're anywhere downtown and then protesters they've been really slim to none so um, it's been an awesome experience I think that everyone's really unified I know within the convention hall um, but you're always going to have the robber rousers outside and, and Carlos I'll give you the last word um, you know the, the poll show that you still have a, a pretty uh, steep climb here nah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what are your hopes and your goals? I mean, I see you're at, still advertising a lot. Are you yeah. going to be pumping in more money to, to you know, because we only have a couple of weeks left? It's consistency. It's like business. You have to be consistent, keep doing the work, and then you'll get the dividends when you're done with the work. It's All pretty right. simple. Gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, joining you. us today. And we will be back in just a moment.